Greetings everyone. Now this tutorial is about endocrine physiology of anterior pituitary and I am your teacher Dr. Mudha sir. Anterior pituitary or pituitary gland is the most important uh, pituitary, gl pituitary uh, endocrine gland that controls almost all aspects of human physiology right from birth that it helps in delivery of newborn via secretion of oxytocin. It also helps in feeding the newborn and infant via secretion of oxytocin and prolactin which plays an important role in production of milk. It also produces growth hormone which plays an important role in the physiology of growth and development from childhood to adulthood. So this is how pituitary plays an important role in all aspects of human physiology. It also plays an uh, important role in puberty. And makes individual capable of reproducing progeny by production of gonadotropins. Now what are the different hormones secreted from anterior pituitary? Let us see. There are six, total six different hormones secreted from anterior pituitary. From somatotropes, growth hormone is secreted. From lactotropes, prolactin is secreted. From corticotropes, ACTH is secreted. And from thyrotropes, TSH is secreted and gonadotropes secrete luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Now let us see what is the physiology of each and every individual hormone. First prolactin. Prolactin means milk synthesizing hormone. Pro means for favoring and lactin means uh, lactogenesis or synthesis of milk. Prolactin is synthesized. The source of prolactin as I have stated uh, earlier, it is lactotrophs. Now how is this, is this uh, prolactin levels regulated? Let us see. Prolactin secretion is mainly promoted by pregnancy, prolactin releasing factor from hypothalamus, nursing and proper sleep. Prolactin levels are inhibited or reduced by three factors dopamine that is prolactin inhibitory hormone from hypothalamus somatostatin and prolactin itself which has negative feedback uh, regulation of prolactin secretion. What is its action? It mainly acts on the prolactin receptor present in the memory tissue and causes formation of more and more casein, lipids and lactose which are the main imp uh, important ingredients of milk. The physiological effects of prolactin are development of memory gland, galactopoiesis that is production of milk and galactokinesis that is secretion of milk. Another important physiological role of prolactin is suppression of ovarian cycle. It suppresses ovarian cycle by inhibiting the uh, release of gonadotropins releasing hormone from hypothalamus. So that's all about prolactin. Now moving on to another hormone release from anterior pituitary that is thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone mainly controls the growth and development of thyroid gland and also secretion of thyroid hormone. It is glyco uh, structurally it is a glycoprotein and source for thyroid stimulating hormone is thyrotrophs. How it is regulated? Let us see. Mainly the diurnal uh, rhythm, the inputs from the central nervous system and uh, stress. These inputs, they stimulate the neurosecretory cells present in the hypothalamus which causes the release of thyrotropin releasing hormone. This thyrotropin releasing hormone acts on thyrotropes present in the anterior pituitary which causes the release of thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone promotes the production of thyroxin which again via negative feedback mechanism inhibits the production of not only TSH but also uh, it inhibits the production of TRH. That is how thyroid stimulating hormone is regulated by TRH, T, uh, uh, TSH and thyroxine release. The important physiological effects of TSH are it promotes the growth of thyroid gland and it also stimulates production of thyroid thyroxine hormone by facilitating iodine uptake, organification of iodine and increasing thyroglobulin uh, synthesis and secretion into the colloid and by increasing the coupling of thyroglobulin molecules. 
it also increases the thyroid hormone release from thyroid gland those are the important effects physiological effects of thyroid stimulating hormone next important hormone release from anterior pituitary is adrenocorticotrophic hormone this adrenocorticotrophic hormone is released from corticotrophs which is a polypeptide the main stimuli for release of adrenocorticotrophic hormone are trauma stress and afferents coming from nucleus tracta solitarius emotional uh, impulses coming via limbic system and drives from circadian rhythm as you can see here uh, in this graph when azth levels were measured which are plotted on y axis and on x axis the uh, duration of one day it is uh, tracked you can see here acth uh, uh, secretion follows circadian rhythms which is uh, maximum in the early morning whereas minimum during evening times another factor which uh, other factors which increase adrenocorticotrophic hormone release are corticotrophin releasing hormone from hypothalamus adh anxiety sleep wake transition stress and depression whereas acth secretion is reduced by negative feedback control uh, from cortisol release from adrenal cortical glucocorticoids and acth itself it is also its release is also inhibited by hormone like somatostatin the important role played by acth is increase in secretion of cortisol and other steroids from adrenal cortex and also it promotes the growth and development of adrenal cortex one important peculiar important physiological effect of acth is it promotes the growth and activity of melanocytes now coming to gonadotropins gonadotropins released from anterior pituitary are two luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone these are also poly polypeptides released from gonadotropins emotional factor and sleep wake cycle in the form of circadian rhythms promote or stimulate the neurosecretory cells in hypothalamus which increases the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone in a pulsatile manner which promotes production of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone again in a pulsatile manner from anterior pituitary which causes the release of androgen and estrogen the androgen and estrogen released from gonads they have inhibitory influence on hypothalamus to reduce the release of gonadotropins this is how luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are regulated what are their important functions yes they mainly they regulate the growth and development of gonads they promote pubertal maturation they also stimulate secretion of sex, sex steroids there is a difference minor difference between what follicle stimulating hormone does and what luteinizing hormone does follicle stimulating hormone mainly stimulates the gonadal cells for production of oogenesis or spermatogenesis whereas luteinizing hormone causes production of estrogen in females and it causes production of testosterone in males now coming to the most important hormone which is secreted from anterior pituitary that is growth hormone growth hormone is a polypeptide which is secreted from somatotrophs important uh, points regarding its regulation are the main important stimulus for production of growth hormone which is responsible for our growth and development are exercise the physical stress good amount of sleep people who don't sleep properly babies who don't sleep uh, properly they always don't grow properly that's why the parents of the babies who don't sleep properly they Uh, complaint of failure to thrive regarding their babies and physical stress particularly physical stress what we do during our exercise promotes production of growth hormone let us see how all these stimuli uh, proper sleep exercise and stress they stimulate the neurosecretory cells of hypothalamus which causes the release of growth hormone releasing hormone which acts on anterior pituitary to release growth hormone growth hormone acts uh, on liver which produces insulin like growth fa factor igf1 which has negative feedback 
control on and not only anterior pituitary but also hypothalamus the growth hormone released from anterior pituitary also has negative feedback uh, suppression of growth hormone releasing hormone produced from hypothalamus this is how growth hormone is regulated in a negative feedback mechanism and also humoral factors now what are the other factors yeah in this graphic you can clearly make out that when the person is sleeping properly in the midnight the growth hormone levels are increased now you in this graph you can see the growth hormone levels are plotted on y axis and duration of the day are plotted on x axis if you can see clearly when the person is performing strenuous exercise growth hormone levels have increased suffixing our claim that exercise increase growth hormone levels other factor is sleep proper sleep if per person sleeps properly have a sound normal sleep then you can see here that there is increase or uh, increase secretion or increase secretion in pulses of growth hormone one more important point regarding the release of growth hormone is growth hormone is released in pulsatile manner in pulses for every 2 hours you can see here in this graphic yes growth hormone release is also affected by the stage of development like at the time of birth it is slowly rising in early childhood it attains a plateau and then during puberty it reaches the peak and then growth hormone levels fall as we uh, undergo aging and finally it uh, levels falls when the person becomes very old in senescent stage so here this graphic uh, this slides depicts what are the factors which increase growth hormone and what are the factors which decrease growth hormone release the factors which increase growth hormone release are hypoglycemia protein rich diet anabolic hormones like androgens estrogens and thyroxine puberty and sleep and growth hormone is uh, inhibited by progesterone cortisol somatostatin somatomedin obesity hyperglycemia and pregnancy now how it acts it acts on leptin receptors which promote production of which uh, which causes jackstat pathway a second messenger system inside the cell and promotes growth the physiological important physiological effects of growth hormone are mainly it promotes growth it also stimulates erythropoiesis it plays an important role in protein metabolism glucose metabolism lipid metabolism and mineral metabolism what are its main roles let us see for growth it promotes linear growth mainly by its effect on musculoskeletal system and it is also responsible for growth of visceral organs and gonads the effects of growth are mediated by somatomedins which are insulin like growth factors which are produced from produced in the liver and the growth hormone acts on liver somatomedins or insulin like growth factors are produced now how it uh, causes the development or growth of skeletal muscles is growth hormone increases the number of chondrocytes chondrocytes are the cartilage cells in the epiphyseal plate now bone has got hypophysis diaphysis and epiphysis epiphysis is a part where main growth of bone occurs so this ep- growing part of the bone is increased by growth hormone this is done by uh, stimulation of both rna and dna synthesis and more and more collagen formation which is required for cartilage formation as uh, this occurs it increases the ca- cartilage mac- matrix and increases the thickness of epiphyseal plate on the other hand growth hormone increases the osteoblastic activity osteoblasts are the cells which promote the growth of bone osteoblasts these are the growing bone cells which converts this cartilage whatever uh, increase in cartilage matrix is there so this osteoblastic activity will convert this ost- uh, cartilage in the ep- epiphyseal plate into bone that's how the bone lengthens which causes linear growth of the bone and it also increases the thickness of the bone 
similar things occur in viscera and gonads in viscera and gonads number of cells and size of the cell is increased by the influence of growth hormone now growth hormones in uh, influence on bone it differs on the stage of development that is if the growth hormone is acted upon on the bones before epiphyseal plate closure it stimulates proliferation of chondrocytes appearance of osteoblasts and in incorporation of sulfates and uh, calcium into the cartilage which increases the thickness of epiphyseal plate and increases the linear growth this is very important point if the epiphyseal plates have closed and now growth hormone is released it no longer increases the uh, uh, linear growth but only bone thickness is increased by periosteal growth so the growth hormone effect of growth hormone on musculoskeletal system also depends on the stage of development if epiphyseal plates are not fused it promotes linear growth whereas if epiphyseal plates are fused the only thickness of the bone increases now effects on protein metabolism growth hormone increases the protein content of the body by increasing the amino acid entry into the cell it promotes uh, more and more rna and dna synthesis and that's how ultimately it increases the protein synthesis which are the building blocks for our body effect on carbohydrate metabolism growth hormone mainly promotes increases the plasma glucose level by increasing the release of glucose from the liver and decreasing the peripheral uptake of glucose whenever the glucose levels increase there is increased secretion of anabolic hormone like insulin which promotes growth effect on fat metabolism it mainly causes production of lipolysis now this lipolysis increase produ causes production of huge amount of energy which is required for growth next important uh, effect is the effect on mineral metabolism mineral metabolism Uh, minerals like phosphate calcium and magnesium are uh, increased in our body under the influence of growth hormone so these are the important effects of growth hormone in our body which promotes the growth and development of our body now coming to the abnormalities the abnormalities are mainly hypersecretion and hyposecretion first we'll go with the hypersecretion hypersecretion of growth hormone before the fusion of epiphyseal plates causes a condition called as gigantism so gigantism by definition is a clinical condition resulting from hypersecretion of growth hormone in growing children before the closure of epiphyseal plates or bones clinical features abnormal height thick lips macroglossia bilateral gynecomastia loss of libido impotency hyperglycemia headache visual defects visual defects cranial nerve palsies and enlargement of pituitary fossa so these are the important features seen in gigantism yeah here you can see the adjacent person he this person's height is quite normal and this person who is suffering from gigantism is very tall next another contrasting condition is acromegaly this is clinical condition occurring due to excessive growth hormone uh, after after the fusion of epiphyseal plates the basic problem here is there is excessive growth in the areas of cartilage so after epiphyseal plate closure what happens there is only increase in thickening of the bones as i have stated earlier so accordingly the the features in acromegaly changes here there is no increase in linear growth but the clinical feature as fe uh, clinical features are like this it causes production of acromegalic face which is characterized by thick lips macroglossia broad nose prominent eyebrows thick skin and coarse facial features which are mainly due to increase in thickening of the bone not the linear growth of the bone now acromegaly as i have stated 
it's a clinical condition in which there is excessive growth hormone production causing increase in bone thickness after fusion of epiphyseal plates so other acromegalic features are prognathism that is protrusion of lower jaw acral parts of uh, the body uh, show abnormalities like spade like hand thick fingers increased head pad large feet with increase in the size of shoes people also complained of kyphosis kyphosis is forward bending and excessive growth of internal organ leading to cardiomegaly hepatomegaly splenomegaly and renomegaly other biochemical dysfunctions are plus poor glucose tolerance hypertriglyceridemia reduced hepatic and lipoprotein lipase activity hypercalcemia and hyperphosphatemia so here you can see prognathism protrusion of the jaw this jaw is protruded and you can see here he is having thick lips a uh, broad nose broad forehead broad flat forehead okay and here you can see here his hand it is quite thick and spade like with coarse facial features these are the typical acromegalic features now coming to another important applied aspect regarding growth hormone that is dwarfism dwarfism is due to deficiency of growth hormone before the closure of epiphyseal plates the hyposecretion of growth hormone leads to stunted growth and dwarfism the clinical features are short stature normal mental activity fat or stout immature face and delicate extremities generally uh, the sexual immaturity is generally associated with gonadal deficiency the treatment for dwarfism is growth hormone that's all folks about anterior pituitary if you have got any questions and doubts you can put it in the comment section thank you